angelic activities as you pray Jesus encounters intro. Our church started praying every night during the season of Rosh Hashanah 2009. Ever since then, our church meet nightly for powerful prayers and revival services. From that day on, an open heaven began over our church. But in 2013, 12 faithful prayer warriors who met at the church had a deep encounter from the Lord that was unlike others. It all began when the youngest prayer warrior in our midst, a teenage at the time fell deeply in love with Jesus after undergoing through a powerful deliverance in which she received the gift of speaking in tongues and many other gifts from the Lord. Though she was taking summer school, she committed to wake up very early and spend two hours with the Lord in prayer before going to school. As she started attending nightly corporate prayers at the church, Jesus first manifested himself to her, took her to the throne room in heaven, giving her a message for the church and all the members. From then on, Jesus started coming every night in his manifest presence and spoke to all of us sometimes as a group or one-on-one. -on -one. The Lord took us to heaven and hell every night and shared with us great and mighty things. He kindly spoke to us and trained us for a period of over one year. Here is the summary of those encounters, details will be shared in books to be written soon, hope this bless you and bring you closer to Jesus. BHF on Saturday night, God touched my heart. My mum and I came early to start cleaning the sanctuary. The service began around six. When I began to pray and for the first fifteen minutes, I wasn't feeling God as much as I wanted to. I asked God to give me more, I told him I was hungering for more, and I asked him to teach me. And yeah, he definitely did that. God's angels during prayer time I opened my eyes to get a drink of water real quick, and then when I closed my eyes again I was shocked when I saw a huge being kneeling right in front of me. It actually scared me at first. I tried to jump back but I couldn't move, it was like I was held still. Next. I tried to open my eyes, but that didn't work at all, it was like they were glued shut. It was overwhelming, I started crying and asking God what was going on. He said, calm down, that's my angel. And all I could say is oh, okay. This angel was immense, he shone and sparkled as if made out of starlight. As I began to pray again, the longer I prayed, God started to show me other things. He showed me that for everyone who is in the sanctuary praying, there is an angel behind each and every one of them. All of these angels were really big and intense looking, but were really beautiful. I'm shaking just thinking about it. They were so big that they barely fit into the room, I'm sure they had to shrink just to fit inside. And in each corner of the sanctuary there was an angel. In the northeast corner of the sanctuary there were two angels, one of which was dancing. He was an angel of joy and humor. I was so surprised that there was an angel of humor. He is full of unconditional joy, and he dances so happily. He danced so beautifully, a tambourine in one hand, and in the other he had a silk ribbon, swirling and prancing. The other angel next to him was guarding the corner and the door which leads out into the hallway. At each doorway in the church there is an angel standing guard except for at the entrance to the church and the entrance to the sanctuary. At the outside entrance to the church there are two angels holding long war swords and large shields, and on the inner entrance to the church there are two more similarly armed angels. Then at the entrance to the sanctuary there are two angels who have their arms crossed over their chests. One had, what seemed like, an olive branch in one hand symbolizing peace and in the other hand a beautiful goblet which was filled with a swirling liquid, symbolizing the blood of Christ. The second angel had a tray, about three inches deep, that was made out of the prettiest metal. On the tray there was some kind of flat bread that symbolized the body of Christ. But what made me cry, was the vase that was also on the tray. The vase was shaped like a teardrop and made out of this amazing crystal, it was very beautiful. God told me that this is a vase that he caught our tears in. At each corner of the building there was an angel stationed outside of the church, in total there were four angels on the ground guarding the outside of the church. On the roof of the church, there are four angels, one angel above each of the angels on the ground, but on the corners of the roof. 
There is another angel on top of the roof, which was above the other four, he seemed to be their leader. He was larger than any of the other angels and he had one hand pointing downward and one hand holding an immense golden scepter. So there are a total of five angels on the roof, four on the bottom of the roof and then the other in the middle, above the roof. And the one who is in the middle, on top, would later take our prayers and praises up to God. Surrounding pastor, there were five angels. I want to explain the positions of these angels. There were two angels behind her standing between the congregation and pastor, with their faces turned toward the congregation. These two angels were standing with their arms crossed over their chests and a shield in one arm and a sword in the other guarding pastor. There are also two angels kneeling on one knee on either side of her, one on the right and one on the left. The angels kneeling next to her were helping her pray, with their arms stretched out toward her. And the fifth angel was standing in front of her. He had one arm pointing up, sending her prayers to the angel on the roof, and one arm pointing down at pastor collecting her prayers in an orb of light. Now, let me explain something about the angels. The angels all wear billowing robes, and a large sash from their right shoulder to below their left hip. And all the angels except for two have silver sashes. The two angels that don't have silver sashes are, the angel that is in front of pastor and the angel who is in the center of the roof. The angel in front of pastor has a bronze colored sash, and the angel that is in the center of the roof has a gold sash. The angels with different colored sashes were of higher ranking than the angels with the silver sashes, and the angel with the gold sash was the highest ranking angel. Even though the sashes were silver, bronze, or gold, they all sort of twinkled and swirled with different colors. Nothing is really just one color, it all shifts and shimmers with the rainbow. Warring angels All of the angels who were outside of the church are in constant warfare when we are praying. The angels outside are larger than the angels that are inside of the church. For each prayer warrior there is an angel. When we are praising God, or praying in earthly languages the angels inside are at work collecting our prayers in their hands like orbs of light. But, when the prayer warriors pray in tongues, especially war tongues, we are helping the warrior angels outside who are in constant warfare. Our prayers are the fuel that gives the angels the strength to keep fighting and to fight powerfully. The warrior angels that are outside of the church are fighting demons and spiritual creatures of darkness. These specific demons are made out of a thick smoke like mist, and every time an angel slices through them, these demons would retreat, regroup, and come right back to attack again. As you are praying powerfully inside, it's seriously a constant warfare outside. That's why we need to pray so hard, we have to be unified with Theses angels. These angels are out there protecting us. Your prayers are their fuel to protect you and keep you safe, without your prayers or with weak prayers your angel would be defeated. That was intense when God showed me that. When we are praying throughout the service, the angels arms are pointed downward, toward us. They are gathering our prayers in orbs of different colored light. For the different types of prayer there are different colors, blue especially light blue is the color of praise, purple is the color of majesty and prayers of thanksgiving, and red is the color of warfare. At the end, when we close the service, all of the angels lifted their hands up to the heavens and released all of the prayers. The orbs of light stretched out into beams of light. The prayers went to the angel on top of the roof. He had one hand down collecting the prayers and they traveled up his arm, across his chest, and up his other arm and shone out through his golden scepter up to heaven. And when the angels raised their arms up to release our prayers, they started to pray too. The sound of their prayers is indescribable, it was like thunder and waves singing and joy, and it was so striking to hear. The most amazing part of my vision which made me cry out in awe, was seeing Jesus' feet. I never knew feet could be beautiful, let alone magnificent and glorious. On his feet there were these stunning and exquisite sandals. Even seeing his feet took my breath away. I don't know how I knew it was the feet of Jesus, but nothing else would be that spectacular. I could feel him smiling down at us. He is so happy with our prayers and praise.
He knows that the warfare is intense and that the sacrifice and price we pay to follow and worship him is overwhelming at times, but it is worth it. He is worth it. He is and was very pleased with us, he is proud of his children. The whole experience was beyond words, but the angels were breathtaking. And the feet of Christ were awe-inspiring and so humbling to see. I know that angels and demons are in a different realm, but I didn't realize how close they are to us. I never knew how much contact we made and had with angelic beings. Jesus is so merciful and loving, his creations, are magnificent and complex, and we, even though sinful and weak, are still capable of bringing him so much honor and joy. Hunger and thirst for God I asked God to give me more, I told him I was hungering for more, and I asked him to teach me. And yeah, he definitely did that. Your prayers is what fuels your warrior angels but, when the prayer warriors pray in tongues, especially war tongues, we are helping the warrior angels outside who are in constant warfare. Our prayers are the fuel that gives the angels the strength to keep fighting and to fight powerfully.